Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at finding the derivative of a function using the chain rule. So first, what is the chain rule? If I have a function that's a nested function or a composition of functions, so say f of x is of the form g of h of x, if that's the case, then f prime of x or the derivative of f is going to be equal to g prime of h of x times h prime of x. Now, this looks weird, and it's kind of hard to remember, so I like to try and think of this derivative in words. I look at g of x as the outside function, and we look at h of x as the inside function. If that's the case, then the derivative of f using the chain rule says take the derivative of the outside, leave this inside piece alone, and last but not least, multiply by the derivative of the inside. So again, that chain rule says take the derivative of the outside, leaving the inside alone, multiply by the derivative of the inside. Let's look at a couple of examples applying the chain rule. Number one, y is equal to three, and then I have all in parentheses x to the fourth plus three x squared plus one, to the fifth power. When I look at something like this, I'm going to look at what's inside the parentheses as the inside. And I'm going to think of this as a whole as something to the fifth power. Before today, before the chain rule, you would see just something like x to the fifth, right? That's something to the fifth power. And when I would apply the power rule, I would get 5x to the fourth. But here, I don't have just x to the fifth. I have this entire thing to the fifth. So when I look at the derivative of the outside, leaving the inside alone, I'm going to ignore this inside function and I'm going to take the derivative like it's a power rule. So I take that exponent, multiply it in front, 5 times 3 is 15. I leave this inside piece alone, x to the 4th plus 3x squared plus 1. I drop that exponent by 1 like I normally would. So what I've done here is I've taken the derivative of the outside, leaving the inside alone. So the derivative of the outside was just a basic power rule. Now to complete the chain rule, I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, the derivative of what's underneath this blue squiggle. So the derivative of that would be 4x cubed plus 6x. Now if you notice, this piece in the parentheses is being raised to the fourth. I don't want to expand that out. However, this piece is only being raised to the first, so I can distribute this 15 into that set of parentheses. So if I do that, I end up with 60x cubed plus 90x, all in parentheses because, again, I distributed the 15 in there, times x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 1 to the fourth. So there's my entire derivative using the chain rule. Let's look at another example. Number two, f of x is equal to the square root of 4x minus 9x to the fifth. This is comparable to just plain old f of x is equal to the square root of x. If I was taking the derivative of rad x, I would first rewrite that as x to the half. And then I would apply the power rule, right? So I would have one half x to the negative half. I'm going to follow the same steps here, and I'm first going to rewrite this so that I don't have a radical. So when I do that, I have 4x minus 9x to the fifth to the one half. So now when I'm looking at this, I'm going to look at the 4x minus 9x to the fifth as the inside, and then something to the half as the outside. So when I start my chain rule here, derivative of the outside is going to be the derivative of something to the half, and I'm going to leave the red squiggle alone. So I'm following these same power rule steps that I did here. I bring the one half to the front. Again, I'm leaving the inside alone, 4x minus 9x to the fifth. Subtract that exponent by one to the negative one half times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of that red squiggle, that's going to be four minus 45x to the fourth. Same idea as before, I can distribute this half in here, but I know that if I do a half times 45, it's going to look kind of gross. So I'm just going to rewrite this as one big fraction. And while I do that, I'm going to make this negative exponent positive. So when I do that, the 4 minus 45x to the fourth, that's going to stay in the numerator because it's just being raised to the first power. For the 1 half, there's a 1 in the numerator. I don't need to write that. And then there's a 2 in the denominator. The last thing is to take this term that's being raised to the negative 1 half and make it to the positive 1 half by bringing it to the denominator with the 2. So then I have 4x minus 9x to the fifth, all to the one half power. There is f prime of x using the chain rule. Number three, f of x is two over the cube root of five x plus one. I am first going to rewrite this so that the denominator has a fractional exponent. So I'm gonna write this as five x plus one to the one third in the denominator. 
I don't want to have to use a quotient rule here while I'm also using the chain rule. So I'm going to bring this entire binomial to the numerator by negating that exponent. So I can again rewrite f of x so that it reads 2, 5x plus 1 to the negative one third. This is now what I'm going to do the derivative of using the chain rule. So when I look at this function, I have something to an exponent. So the inside piece here is going to be the 5x plus 1. When I start to find f prime, derivative of the outside leaving the inside alone says to do negative 1 third times 2. So that's negative 2 thirds. Leave the inside alone. Drop this exponent by 1. So I would need to do negative 1 third minus 1, which is the same thing as negative 1 third minus 3 thirds. So I'm going to get this to the negative 4 thirds power. So again, that's derivative of the outside. Leave the inside alone times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 5x plus 1 is 5. I'm definitely going to clean this up. When I clean this up, I'm just going to work from left to right. So I see that I have a fraction here, and I see that this is being raised to a negative exponent, so I'm going to have to put it in the denominator to make it positive. So I'm going to start by making one big fraction. The negative 2 goes in the numerator. The 3 goes in the denominator. This 5x plus 1 to the negative 4 thirds is going to go in the denominator so that exponent become positive. And then this 5 is also in the numerator. So all the way cleaned up, this is going to say negative 10 over 3 times 5x plus 1 to the 4 thirds. Let's look at one last example of applying the chain rule. Number 4. Y is equal to 1 over 4x minus x over 4 to the 6. So again, this looks a little weird. I'm going to treat what's inside the parentheses as the inside and then something to the 6th as the outside. So when I find y prime, again, I'm using the chain rule, derivative of the outside, leaving the inside alone. Bring the 6 to the front, leave the inside alone, drop that exponent by 1. So that's derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone. Times, now I have to do the derivative of the inside. But this looks a little weird, and I have an issue here because this x is in the denominator. So I'm actually going to rewrite the inside of that function as 1 fourth x to the negative 1 minus, I'm going to pull a coefficient of 1 fourth out here, so minus 1 fourth x. So now this blue squiggle is the same thing as this. I just rewrote it. So now when I multiply by the derivative of the inside, I'm going to take the derivative of this. Power rule here, negative 1 times a fourth is negative 1 fourth. Subtract that exponent by 1. The derivative of negative 1 fourth x is going to be negative 1 fourth. I'm going to start to clean this up a little bit. First, I'm going to distribute the 6 into these parentheses. So that's going to give me negative 6 over 4 x to the negative 2 minus 6 over 4, and then bring this set of parentheses down, 1 over 4x minus x over 4 to the fifth. I'm going to reduce these fractions and make this exponent positive in my next step. So that's going to become negative 3 over 2x squared minus 3 over 2, bring this set of parentheses down. That's it for applying the chain rule. There'll be another video coming out shortly that will have the chain rule using trig derivatives, and then as we move on into transcendental functions such as e to the x and ln x, we'll apply the chain rule to those functions as well. So keep an eye out for those videos as they come. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.